The mentality of being frugal, of only buying the bare minimum stuff that is not going to excel me towards my next climbing adventure, those are the aspects that kind of make someone a bit of a dirtbag. And that is something I consider myself, being frugal in all the things that do not matter. Rock climbing, and the idea of cultural anthropology, quickly became a huge part of my life when I got to school in 2014. Not only was I drawn to rock climbing alone, but the idea of a rock climbing culture that graciously accepted me into its community. While exploring potential research topics, I was almost immediately drawn towards defining the dirtbag culture that had recently been introduced to me through social media and friends. I have always been keen on the idea of a less materialistic lifestyle, so when the idea of the dirtbag culture presented itself to me, with a combination of rock climbing as well as a minimalistic lifestyle, I was intrigued. I was interested in what makes up different aspects of a popular rock climbing culture, specifically dealing within a minimalistic lifestyle, in this case being a dirtbag, which met the criteria for a unique climbing subculture living a minimalistic lifestyle perfectly. Some argue that legitimate dirtbagging is dead, while others argue it is very much alive and well. But I argue that there is a similar mindset within the climbing community today that follow some of the same key aspects of the dirtbag way of life. This is why I chose to do my senior research, to explore the climbing dirtbag lifestyle. Rock climbing, in its simplest form, has always been around. However, in the 1800s, rock climbing was beginning to evolve into its own sport separate from previously done mountaineering. Then, in the 1940s, climbing started to gain more attention and continue to gain popularity through the 60s in areas such as Yosemite in California, as bigger and better climbs were being established for the first time. Rock climbing today is at an all-new popularity high and there are thousands of well-established climbing destinations around the world. Along with the rest of the world, the rock climbing culture and different subcultures of climbing are constantly evolving. For example, Jillian Rickley states that rock climbing is often considered an extreme sport within popular media, but if you ask a climber, they would tell you that it was a lifestyle sport. Jillian Rickley has done research regarding the dirtbag culture at the Red River Gorge in Kentucky by looking at rock climbers' motivations, goals, and community dynamics. Luke Nihal is a climber living in Durango, Colorado, who has written various works on climbing and the dirtbag culture. Nihal is also the publisher of The Climbing Zine, where he states, When you truly fall in love with rock climbing, it's impossible to sustain the love without a community. And to dirt bag, to live simply out of a bag, in the dirt, your existence has to be sustained with a community. Haven't got a penny, haven't got a dime, but I know how to have a good old time. I ain't got a dollar, baby, when I do, I'm gonna go and spend it all on you. When I get the money, we can run away, sing a little song about yesterday. They're never gonna catch me, long as I'm alive, you and me together will survive. For my research, I will be interviewing 13 individuals from both people lower on the dirtbag spectrum who only spend a couple months out of the year living the dirtbag way, to extreme dirtbags who spend a majority of the year living the dirtbag lifestyle through ethnographic visual methods and grounded theory. Through grounded theory meaning developing theory that is grounded in data systematically gathered and analyzed. And how theory evolves during actual research. I will use this as a basis for my own exploration and interpretation of a evolved lifestyle dirtbag climbing community today. Even though I argue there's a dirtbag spectrum, depending on how intense one chooses to live within the climbing lifestyle subculture, 
The overall mindset that these climbers share is widespread among the climbing community. Due to the fact that everything in the world, including rock climbing, is constantly evolving, the last key aspect I wish to explore through ethnographic methods is the rise of neoliberalism and its effects within the climbing community. When climbing first started, there are no such things as the technically advanced cam devices climbers now place on a route to protect themselves while climbing. Back then, there were just questionable ropes that people used more to help their mentality of being up on a vertical cliff face. Neoliberalism can be defined as lamentable spread of capitalism and consumerism. Now, climbers spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on all the climbing gear in order to have a successful climbing lifestyle. Indian Creek is important to my research because research regarding the dirtbag climbing culture has been explored, just not within this area. Indian Creek this time of the year, March through April, is within its prime climbing season, and there's good potential for finding committed dirtbags. After transcribing all of my interviews, I was able to see the bigger picture. In a way, I had documented an evolution through the rise of neoliberalism within our society that has influenced the lifestyle dirtbag climbing community. I had a good idea of how this specific subculture functioning and fueling off of one's climbing community and passion really played into my research. Responses concerning the lifestyle dirtbag climber are divided into four categories passion, community, comfort versus discomfort, and the personal journey. The following presentations of these categories are of various composite responses from 13 different interviews. I chose the most relevant and typical narrative examples that I found throughout my transcribed interviews. I think it is important to discuss what respondents had to say about the dirtbag culture and how it has become more modernized through the years with a shift in legitimate dirtbagging to more of a dirtbag mentality. Individuals discussed a spectrum that took place regarding this lifestyle due to the variables that can or cannot make someone a dirtbag climber. Every respondent had similar viewpoints about a modernized dirtbag climbing community. They thought that since the world of climbing has evolved, why wouldn't a lifestyle evolve with it? I think there are a lot of things that bringing a dirtbag is, and a lot of people have different perspectives on what that is too. I think there is more of a spectrum nowadays because there are so many different people who climb, so many different ages coming from different parts of their life, and socioeconomic structure, and with that comes a whole range to what a dirtbag can be. Within a more neoliberal society that focuses on consumerism and a more materialistic lifestyle, it would make sense that cultures would also shift based off the commercial need for more and more gear being used among the climbing community. Another individual said, I don't think the term dirtbag even has to be associated with climbing. However, I think it is a lot more glorified in the climbing community than it is in a lot of other dirtbag communities. A modernized dirtbag culture makes sense. This particular group of climbers legitimately creates a community in which a lifestyle strives. And it is not so bizarre to find that the term dirtbag is becoming redefined in certain aspects. Instead of a die-hard dirtbag, I saw the shift in dirtbag culture being more of a mental state of mind above anything else. The rise of the neoliberal and consumerism-based society allow for climbers to have access to the gear. Six of the 13 individuals expressed that when they first started getting into climbing, they needed to get the gear as soon as they knew that it was something they wanted to pursue in order to take the next step. It's an interesting parallel to be practicing minimalism on one hand, but also needing the tools to be able to climb in the first place. With any form of a lifestyle, one can argue there comes a shared community bond. Sense of community is important for so many different aspects of life, and climbing definitely is not any different when it comes to a strong, supportive community. While exploring this sense of a community among dirtbag climbers, one can truly see the importance it holds in getting people involved in climbing in the first place. Everyone I talked to was nothing but excited to talk about the relationships and friends that they had formed through climbing. I remember just bouldering, like we had this boulder club and everything, everybody was so like supportive and motivating and just really like helped and encouraged you to do these things that you're like, I can't do that. And then all of a sudden you're doing it and you're like, whoa, <laughs> that's pretty cool. 
The idea of comfort and discomfort resonate with one another among the lifestyle dirtbag climbing community because there seems to be an ongoing conversation debating legitimate dirtbags in our day and age with our ever-evolving society and culture. Everyone I talked to said that if you lived out of a Sprinter van or did the whole hashtag van life on Instagram, you could not consider yourself a dirtbag. You should be sacrificing some sort of creature comforts in order to like chase after your passion, whether it's climbing, biking, whether outdoor pursuit it is, but like, I don't know. I feel like a lot of people would come into it too. The conversation of comfort and discomfort for a dirtbag is important because on one side of the spectrum, if you can be comfortable, you can climb for a longer period of time, and that ultimately is the goal of a dirtbag. However, if things get too comfortable, then there is a fine line between whether or not you are actually a dirtbag, regardless of your other financial or lifestyle choices. If you have a Sprinter van, you're not a real dirtbag. I think it's the bubble. The van is the bubble. No matter where you are, you have a comfortable space to go to no matter where you are. But I think to be a true dirt bag, the true essence of the dirt bag is dealing with the discomfort and not getting too down about it. The respondents expressed the opinion in one way or another that they were passionate about climbing and their climbing lifestyle. Without the driving force and the good days, there would be no purpose to go through the struggle of weather and minimalism or discomfort. This passion was expressed in the following manner. It's about conserving as much of your money as possible. So that way, you can spend the most time climbing and not waste time doing other stuff. Because climbing is the most important thing. I find that to be an important part of why I climb, that spiritual connectedness. So, um, and that comes, that connection comes more clearly when I'm true about the other aspects in life that I need to keep a balance with. You're focusing on something that is physical, but then you also have to focus on protecting your own life with placing your own gear. It's like everything else stops existing. It's this little bubble around you. It's really cathartic. It pushes all the stresses out. Lastly, tying into one's passion for climbing comes the personal journey. One individual stated, when there's no suffering, you aren't going to remember it. While another woman expressed, there are some amazing unexpected days that make it worth it. Without the personal growth and development of even crying for five minutes while topping out on Zodiac, climb on El Cap at Yosemite, there's nothing that compares to that. The journey can possess all of the emotions that make us human, from tears of joy to tears of being terrified on a climb. The journey makes it all worth it. Grounded theory was a really helpful method that allowed for me to go off of previously done literature, use the research as a good starting off point, and then shift my research to something a little different than what has already been done before. With the evolution of a lifestyle comes a new group of individuals who question and push boundaries past a previous generation. With a modernized lifestyle dirtbag climber, maybe it is okay to live out of your vehicle if it is going to give you the best possible means in order to climb.